I'm Mitali from Let's Tell You Story Publishing. I'm so excited to be able to speak to you this morning. Let me start with a story. It's 18 months ago, just before the pandemic hit. A good friend of mine calls me, Mike, and he tells me, Mitali, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm closing my business for good. Now, this shocked me. Mike has been working in corporate roles for over 20 years. But in 2018, he finally decided to follow his dream and set up his own executive coaching practice. And unfortunately, just two years later, he's telling me that he's going to close his business. Why? Well, it had nothing to do with his skills or talent. He's an exceptional coach. No, the reason why he was sick to death of being on the lead generation hamster wheel. Now, this is something a lot of coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs in general face. A lot of people set up their business to do more of what they love. Unfortunately, they end up doing less of what they love as they spend most of the time on lead generation and marketing. And it's exhausting as well. Now, I'm a writer. I've been writing for over 20 years. I'm a former journalist. Over the last 10 years, I've been writing content for all kinds of businesses. And because of that, I've written every type of content you can think of, anything from email sequences to landing pages, sales pages, print ads, online ads, uh, social media posts, blog posts, Amazon listings, leaflets, brochures, anything you can think of when it comes to content for business at some point I've written it. So I decided last year what I was going to do was I wanted to find out which is a piece of content I've written that's made the biggest difference to a business. Because I thought if I could find that out, then I can help people like Mike. If I can specialize in one thing, the piece of content that makes the biggest difference to a business owner, then I can specialize in that and help people like Mike. So I went back and started interviewing all of my previous clients. Now, if I was a gambling woman, I would have put a large bet on sales pages being the piece of content that makes the biggest difference. After all, that's the piece of content that has a big old buy button where people part with their cash, right? The feedback I got shocked me. The piece of content that's made the biggest difference to them was a book. A book has allowed them to position themselves as an expert, as an authority, as head and shoulders above their competition. It's also given them incredible visibility, which means they just naturally attract leads to their business on a constant level without even trying all so much. Because of this, last year, I decided that I wanted to focus just on books. But not only that, I wanted to help people write their own books. There's only one of me and there's only so many books in a year I can write. But if I can show people how to write their own books, then I can help exponentially more people. I've ghostwritten seven business books so far, and in total, they generated over $5 million in business revenue. So I know where I'm coming from. I know exactly how to write lead generating business books, because that's what they are. These aren't books for the sake of books. These are books that turn into incredible marketing tools for your business. So today, I want to talk to you about the four steps to getting a book idea out of your head and into a manuscript. You're gonna find out what to write about that resonates with your target audience. You'll discover how to make a target audience love you. You'll learn how to never get writer's book or get lost inside your book. And you'll discover how to write a thousand words in an hour. I know that sounds impossible, but trust me, stick with me and you'll be able to see how easy it is to write a thousand words in an hour. So the first step, what to write about that resonates with your target audience. This is a big one because a lot of people say, I don't really know what to write about. There's a simple formula you can use. And it's a, a three-step formula that I use all the time. So the first step is figure out who you serve, who is your target audience. Step two is what do they need to do or what do they need to learn? And then step three is, what are the benefits they will receive to doing step two? So it's, it seems a bit dry until you see it in reality, okay? So this was my formula for my target audience. So step one, who do I serve? Would be authors, people, business um, owners who are looking to write a book. Step two, what do they need to do or learn? Well, they need to learn how to write and leverage a business book so it acts as a great marketing tool for their business. And step three, what benefits will they get? They'll be able to raise their visibility, 
their authority. They'll be able to make more money in their business, generate a ton of leads, and they can help exponentially more people with their expertise. When you put that together, you have what I call a reader's needs statement. And I had that typed up and then blown up in big and taped to my wall when I was writing my own book, The Freedom Master Plan. And it meant that everything that went into my book, I knew that it will resonate with my target audience. Anything that I wrote that I felt didn't fit the reader's need statement, which is they needed something to raise their visibility and authority and make more money in their business. Anything that didn't fit that got thrown out of the book. This is how you make sure you pick a topic and you stick to a topic that resonates with your target audience. So step two, how to make your target audience love you. This is so simple, and yet I don't see many would-be authors doing this. Pick three to five books in your niche or in your topic. They're already out there, popular books. And then read the reviews. Now, if your chosen books just have a handful of reviews each, you can read the, all the reviews in that case. But perhaps you picked some incredibly popular book that has hundreds if not thousands of reviews trying to sift through all of that can be overwhelming and bewildering so what i do is i target three star reviews now the reason why i do that is three star reviews tend to be the most balanced a lot of one star reviews or five star reviews can just be one liners for example one of the best things i've ever read that could be a five star review it gives you nothing constructive the one star reviews are usually just rants I'm not saying all of them are, some of them can be detailed, but a lot of them don't have the detail that you want. With a three-star review, think about it. It's almost impossible to leave a three-star review without going into detail. Three stars is a decent rating, so you would go into why it was good enough for three stars, but you've knocked off two stars. So therefore you'd go into why you knocked off two stars. So it's a very, it's a wonderful way to shortcut to get to the knowledge that you need to find out about this book. That knowledge that you find out is gold. All the positives, you need to make sure they go into your book as well. All the negatives, you make sure you avoid in your book. Or if the negatives are things that are missing in those books, now you know what your book needs to include. This is how you make sure your target audience will love you before you've even written a single word. Third step how to never get writer's block or get lost inside your book. Here's the thing, when people say they've been writing for years, they're not writing. Even if you're a slow writer, if you've been writing for more than a year, you have at least a book, maybe even two books worth of content. What's happening here is people have got lost inside their book or they're getting writer's block and they're stuck. The reason that happens is they didn't plan their book well. Most people think planning a book is working out the topics, the chapters of each book, and then off they go to start writing. And then they wonder why they're spinning the wheels, they're procrastinating, they go off on a tangent, new ideas pop into the head and they start weaving it in. And it just all gets very bloated and it leads to overwhelm. The best way to stop this from happening is to plan your book meticulously. I use mind mapping software. My favorite software is mind42.com. That's mind and then the numbers 42.com. It's a completely free software and allows you to create very detailed mind maps. To give you an idea of how many points should be on your mind map, you should have at least 350 to 400. Absolute minimum 300 points on your mind map. That gives you an idea of the detail you need to go into before you even start writing a word. Plan your book out that way first and trust me, you can't get writer's block because your mind map is going to tell you exactly what you've already written and what you still need to write. This is how you make sure you never get writer's block and how you'll never get lost inside your book. Step four, how to write a thousand words in an hour. I've given you half the answer already. So as you just found out, when people say they've been writing for years, they've not been writing. They're actually stuck inside the book and they're planning and writing at the same time. If you mind map your book out, it means the words stop flowing. So there's half the answer there. You certainly will be able to get close to a thousand words in an hour if you've mind map your book out first. But the second hack that really makes you a fast writer is you should never write your book, dictate it. 
the average person speaks 200 to 250 words per minute, but they only type 40 words per minute. So therefore, think of the speed that you'll be able to get your book out. And also when it's used in conjunction with your mind map, there's going to be no loss of train of thought. There's going to be no duh moments or where was I or what was I meant to say? None of that's going to happen. That only happens when you don't plan. When you have your mind map in front of you, you know exactly what you need to say. And this is how you can write a thousand words in an hour. So I hope those steps have helped you. I want to leave you with one final story. Now, I'm an example of what happens to people when they write a book. So as you know, I've ghostwritten seven business books, but that was as a ghostwriter. So my name's not on those books. In the middle of a pandemic last year, I decided to transition from being a ghostwriter and copywriter to becoming a book coach and publisher. Yes, I started a whole new business in the middle of a pandemic when I didn't even need to. I was a successful ghostwriter and copywriter. And most other entrepreneurs were seeing their profits plummet. I published my book in March of this year. Since then, my visibility has just gone through the roof. I've been asked to speak at well-known summits. I've been asked to speak on podcasts. I'm here on Business Breakfast TV. And I wouldn't have been able to get these opportunities if it weren't for the fact that I'm an author. Honestly, writing a book for your business is the best marketing tool you'll ever create for your business. So if you're interested in what I've said, and if you're thinking this could be something good for me, I would urge you to go to my website. That's the freedommasterplan.com. That's the freedommasterplan.com. That's my author website. And there you can download the first chapter of my book, The Freedom Master Plan, for free. My book is important for would-be authors. The reason being is I wrote that book for one reason. And that is to give people a master plan of what they're going to do with their books. This is so key. Remember me telling you earlier that you can have mediocre products and services, but if you know how to market yourself well, you'll do well. And if you have amazing products and services, but if you don't know how to market yourself, your business will fail. It's the same thing with books. You can have a mediocre book, but if you know how to leverage it correctly, then you will do well. You can have the best book since sliced bread. But if you don't know how to leverage your book correctly, it won't do what you wanted to do for you. What I did with the Freedom Mass Plan is I interviewed seven of my previous clients who I've written a book for. And I asked them what they did to leverage their book to build these amazing six and seven figure brands. And I recorded every single tip, tactic, strategy into the Freedom Mass Plan. So when you get your hands on it, you will find out all of the strategies that our clients have used. And it just means you don't need to do the trial and error that they did. You will have an end game. And I hope that will motivate you to write your book. Because as I said, a book really is the best marketing tool you'll ever create for your business. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to hear your questions and answer them.